the inspection of the electrical service in any building can be an ominous, massive bit of confusion or stress. But when following the COMSOP and taking each element at a time, it's not so bad. So when, we do, when we're doing our commercial inspection of the electrical system in this office space, I'm going to want to first identify the main service disconnect. While I might have a meter on this side, our electric service is coming through the meter into this cabinet here, but then coming across behind me to this spot right here. Right here is labeled service disconnect. So by that, I can identify where the disconnect is for this building. Again, we're looking to make sure that I can turn this building off in less than six movements. In this case, one. Moving from on to off, in this case, would disconnect the entire building. From that, I can, I can garner what the amperage is, what the phase is, and what our wiring is. And then from here, I've got all of these other disconnects. These disconnects go to three other services located in this building. Those services could be in other mechanical rooms. Those services could be other locations of the building. But in any case, I can identify that. You noticed that at no space or no time have I touched this yet. Before I touch any bit of electricity or any electric current device, I will always use my non-contact voltage detector. And so before I've touched anything, I will make sure I touch all pieces of metal. As part of the inspection, I'm also going to look at my working space and dedicated space. So if you can't remember what those definitions are, working space protects the worker, which we're required to have 30 inches by 36 by 78, and dedicated space protects the equipment for which goes the width of the equipment to a spot six foot above the equipment or to the next structural level. Nothing is supposed to be in that space. Now the one caveat to, to working space is, this is much wider than 30 inches. So our working space would consume 36 inches deep for my safety, but the width of this pet equipment, but then the 78 still exists. When I look above this unit for dedicated space, you'll see that here's the top of this unit. It's supposed to extend six foot above or to the next structural level. Because our next structural level is directly above us, then we're fine. We don't have anything else in that area except one thing. And that one thing happens to be that sprinkler head. Sprinkler heads are the only exception to the dedicated space rule for which they are allowed to be in that space. But again, watch our working space, watch our dedicated space. Once I've identified during my inspection the main gear and my service disconnect, and I've understood its size, now I can start proceeding around the rest of the room and inspect those elements. Carrying forward in our commercial electrical inspection of this office building, it's still got a lot of stuff. And remember, your working space and dedicated space extends to everything in the building. That includes the top of this transformer. And this transformer should not be the location for Sherman Williams paint. I, it's very common in any commercial space you inspect that you're gonna have stuff placed on transformers. I've been in inspections, this is where you keep your lunch because it keeps it warm. And so we want to watch to make sure that all of that is set. Now there's one item that we haven't talked about yet on commercial space, and that is even profiles or even setbacks. So when I look at this space, this is obviously wrong. Where this is in our dedicated space, but this is the front of the transformer. But you'll see we have a panel behind. Again, I got to test the panel before I touch anything. I've got this electric panel behind this transformer. Now you'll see that for me to be able to service this, this panel, I have to reach across 
the transformer for which I can place myself into contact. This panel is actually not installed properly. It should be on struts and extended to within six inches of the front of anything located above or below it. So I would definitely want to photograph that and look for any issues. I would also test every other panel in the room. Now when I have a commercial inspection with multiple panels, you're going to decide how you want to tackle the documentation of that inspection. One of the most successful tools you could use in that documentation is the use of a schedule. A schedule is basically creating a list in one visual encompassing for your client to understand what they have. And so on that schedule, rather than doing an individual page for every panel, I'm going to list all of those panels and gear and transformers present in the building in one long list. That list is, in, well, there's not a definition of what it has to be on it, but I think what's important to be on it is the name of the panel, location of the panel, size of the panel, phase of the panel, brand of the panel, and lastly, any issues that you might have found. So how you get some of that information is located right on the panel itself. On a panel such as this one, I have a placard on it. That placard says that this panel is panel L-A. I don't know. That noise that you hear is the elevator. This is the elevator room as well. I don't know where panel LA services, but I can inspect panel LA. So I know that this is panel LA. It is 120, 208 voltage. It is three phase, four wire. That is what the placard says. Then beyond that, with the commercial inspection, we know that we are not required to probe, dismantle, or access the interior of these panels. So I wouldn't take this apart. In taking this apart, I would have to take away a, these screws. Most of these screws are missing. That would absolutely be a deficiency for me. When I'm inspecting this panel and not having all of the screws not present, I would want to write up. I would also want to write up the fact that this screw that's present right here looks so much like a pointed screw and does not look like the official panel screw that came with this panel. I would want to write up that safety issue or potential safety issue as well. And then lastly, in the inspection of this particular panel, I'm going to identify the fact that we are missing an open knockout right here, for which it's very easy for us to be able to place a finger to the interior of this panel and note that, or actually come in contact with the live electricity. So noting that on my report. So again, I am going to identify this as panel LA, 120, 208 voltage, three phase, four wire, and then the physical deficiencies, which include missing screws, potentially wrong screws, and open knockouts. And I'm going to repeat that process for all the rest of the panels in this room. Continuing with the electric inspection of the office building, and we're painting from LA, panel LA, to this panel, which is called LA Sub, we look above it. And many, for many of us, identifying the type of electrical distribution or raceways is important. When we're looking at those, we could have rigid raceways or conduit, and we could have flexible various types of raceways or conduit. In many jurisdictions, they don't allow flexible conduit in an accessible space. Those are usually, those are usually left to small whips and small connectors above drop ceilings where they're inaccessible or could be easily damaged. So just noting the presence of them, because we are not code enforcement officers or authorities having any jurisdiction, identifying them and then letting that, letting that be in your report is more than enough. 
But then carrying forward, we have the transformer. We talked about setback. We talked about working space. I think we should look at the transformer and what its purpose is. If our main service is 480 volts, 277, we need to have some way of dropping down that voltage to allow the lighting to work, to allow the receptacles to work. And by having that voltage drop down requires one tool, and that tool is a transformer. There are two types of transformers, step up and step down. Step up increases voltage, step down decreases voltage. And the easiest way for you to identify if it's step up or step down is by demo, de identifying the label plate. A label plate on every transformer will have a primary and secondary voltage. Primary is in, secondary is out. If the primary voltage is higher than the secondary voltage, it steps down. If the primary voltage is smaller than the secondary voltage, it steps up. And so on your inspection, you're going to take a photograph, or you should take a photograph of the transformer, as well as the label plate, and note what it's servicing. In this particular case, this transformer comes from the main 480 gear, comes through the bottom of it, comes out of it, and feeds upstream some stepped-down voltage. So look at your label plates, identify them, and note where they're servicing. Over my shoulder for the first part of this video has been this bit of spaghetti. Uh, it's not an Italian restaurant. This is the phone system. For a lot of us, we'll walk in this room and immediately our eyes and our gaze is going to expand to, holy moly, how am I going to look at this? Well, there's great news for a commercial property inspector. We don't. This is the low voltage system. Within the COMSOP, it's excluded. This is the phone system. This is where all of the phone and data lines for this entire office space migrate through. If you want to take a photo of it, great. If you don't want to take a photo of it, great. If you just want to know that that is low voltage system. But over this shoulder, well, this big box is the elevator box. This is actually the elevator control box. Not the hydraulic box, not the pump, but this is, where this, this is where all of the switching is done. When you hit the button and summons the car, that's all done through this. Now what's interesting, we've just spent all this time in this electrical room talking about working space and dedicated space. Well, because elevators are inspected by a different authority than the electrical inspection, you're going to see on this floor this beautiful black and yellow tape identifying the proper working space. And that's fabulous because we know that nothing can be in this working space that's, that, that's within 36 inches by 30 inches by 78. So storing the bucket of paint, probably not the right place to place it. So you want to always wash to see what's in our working space, anywhere with electricity, especially around elevators, equipment. As we're migrating through the room, this building's a very unique building because this office space actually has photovoltaic cells or solar panels up on the roof. And so again, with electric and anything electric, there has to be disconnects. In this case, while walking around the room and surveying what we have before I even started this inspection, I've identified the fact that right here is my main PV or photovoltaic service disconnect. Now, it's different than the main service disconnect in the building because this lever is not gonna disconnect the building. It only disconnects the photovoltaic from the system. And so if I shut this lever off as a building occupant or building owner, then I'm gonna remove the photo system or the PV system from the building. But right now it's going 
from our PV controllers, which we'll show you in a moment, into this, and then out of this, into our service feed. And then that's supplementing the building and allowing the building to have at least partial electricity being solar driven. So with that, let's go look at the individual cell absorptions. Now we talked about this, the disconnect. Solar PV systems are beyond the concept. It says that right in our exclusions. It could be another ancillary service, could be a service that you bring in a specialty consultant, you decide on your training. But as part of the electrical inspection, these inverters, which are attached to each of the cell arrays, this is what we should be looking at. Now, I'm not looking at it to know that this is running or not running, even though I can see illumination. And if I, if I was in here, again, beyond the ComSOP, but certainly within my gaze, I could see if that light was flashing some sort of distress. Or that light was flashing and the three others weren't. That would show me some distress. But what I am looking for, again, working space, it's electric. Dedicated space, it's electric. And then I'll look at my connections to make sure that my conduit or raceways are right, that my junction boxes, my busways, or anything else in here are all tight and secure. So going through a commercial building, industrial office like this one, know you're gonna have a lot of panels, a lot of systems. Just stick to the basics, stick to the ComSOP. Understand your working space, your dedicated space, identify the main service disconnect, and then create your inventory with those lists of issues you might develop. But by all means, use a non-contact voltage detector and stay safe. Follow the ComSOP and do great commercial inspections.